multiple um, media or, or multiple social media channels. We're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but uh, happy to be with you. Uh, got a few things that we want to share with you this morning. But first of all, I just want to say to you, thank you for all of the folks who for the last now about three months that we've been coming on uh, every morning, uh, every Wednesday morning at seven o'clock. For those of you who have uh, somewhat religiously and, uh, and and dutifully followed and, and, and got on here and, you know, said good morning. I really, really appreciate it. I don't you don't know how much that means to me to see you out there, uh, to know that you're listening. Uh, to make a good morning and to to feel like something that we're saying and uh, and bigger than that, some of the things that we're trying to do are uh, paying a dividend or making a difference in uh, in your not in just in your lives, but especially in your business life. So thank you for being out there. Uh, thank you for getting up early. I'm looking for my cup of tea right now. It's somewhere out of reach. I better go and get it. Uh, thank you for uh, making comments and thank you for sharing. I, I asked for tea and voila, <laughs> there it is. I get it. How about that? Thank you, Marquita, for uh, being not only my technical assistant here, promoter, director, uh, what all of those other things, but also uh, bringing, bringing this cup of tea. So, you know, really happy to, to see all of you out there. So, uh, so check this out. You know, I've been talking a bit, you know, we've been talking about business and we know how difficult it is to succeed in business. Uh, believe me, I know it is absolutely not easy. Uh, and it is, uh, something that is fraught with peril and, and, and consternation and strife and sometimes disappointment, sometimes setback. Robert, good morning. But we love helping folks start, grow, and develop businesses. It's what I do. It's what I like doing. It's, it's something that I think is my call. Uh, you know, I got a chance to talk to some people last night, and I'll, I'll share more about that a little bit later on. But, uh, but my first job was at a bank, and I was hired at Birmingham Trust National Bank in 1973. And early on in my banking career, they, they made me a loan officer sometime shortly thereafter. So early on in my banking career, one of the things that I realized is that the bank didn't need me. Now, I realized this. I don't know if the bank realized it. I think they did. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. But I realized that the bank didn't need me to cultivate business, to make loans in Vestavia Hills and Mountain Brook and and places like that, but they did need me. And I certainly wanted to cultivate businesses, business, make loans and help people in Fountain Heights where my grandparents lived at the time or in Denise Good Morning or in West End or in Roosevelt City where I grew up. And so I've just always had this sort of calling to try to, to help folks that other people might have been overlooking. And so so I'm happy to, to have been able to do that for quite a few years um, and, and happy that it, that it worked out. So along those lines, you know, we did the, we did the, the how to get your bank to say yes or getting your bank to say yes. Good morning, Eldrick. Getting your bank to say yes, we did that. Uh, we made it a little exclusive. We only allowed 30 people, I think, in. Uh, had a good crowd. And, and so just sharing that information uh, with business owners, just to make sure that you can, if you're, you're looking for financing, that you can go to your bank, Lewis, good morning, and that bank, and, and because you make a good presentation, you've done your research, you have a good plan, uh, your, you qualify, and we can talk more about what what that means. But with all of that being said, at the end of the conversation, the answer is yes. 
And so we did that uh, back in June. Uh, we really enjoyed doing it. But I've been telling you for a while, there are a lot of folks out here who need something a little more basic. Um, and so on September 10th, and we're going to put the link up at some point um, so you can can register for this event. But on September 10th, we're going to do what basically uh, is to help you walk through a self-assessment or self-evaluation. Uh, we want you to be able to look at your characteristics, your strengths, your weaknesses, and determine, you know, how likely is it for you to succeed as an entrepreneur, one. But number two, what you could do to change some of your habits, what you can do to prepare better, what you could do to put yourself in a better position to be successful if you take this entrepreneurial plunge. Uh, we want to help you, you know, look inside and and do some self-evaluation uh, to gain an understanding about where and who that entrepreneur is inside of you. I mean, is there is there a business owner inside of you? And and there may not be one at this very moment, but you need to know that, uh, especially if you're planning to launch a business. Um, we're, we want to help you further develop your entrepreneurial skills. If you have skills as an entrepreneur that need to be further developed, then we want to be in a position to help you further to develop those skills. And, and finally, to talk more about whether you have what it takes. And, and there's a long list of what it takes. But just a few of them would be, do, do you have the knowledge? Uh, do you have or can you get the money? And, 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 and I wrote something down this morning. And yes, when I wake up in the morning, I do somewhat <laughs> prep for these for these live broadcasts. But I thought about the word patience. And I just want to highlight patience right now, because uh, because in any endeavor in life, whether it's as an entrepreneur, whether it's as a, a, a manager at some cor corporation, whether it's it's as a parent, a husband, it takes patience. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day. That's an old cliche that you often hear people use. Uh, and, and that denotes the fact that it takes patience. What, I, what I've noticed in my life, and I think I've noticed this with other people, when we run out of patience and we think that we're, you know, at the 11th hour, but it's really just 630 and we start making changes, you know, we don't stay the course that's when we that's when we mess up. And so, you know, if you've lined up your ducks, you know that you've got your ducks in a row. You properly planned. You prayed about it. Jeffrey, good morning. Uh, you know, you have a good plan. Then you have to execute that plan in patience. Uh, it is really important that you have the discipline to have patience. And in order to have patience, it does take discipline because, you know, we like to jump at the next shiny object that shows up, the next shiny opportunity. Yes, I'm on this path, but boy, here's something else that I may want to jump out here and do. No, sometimes it's better to not go after every shiny object or go after what seems to sometimes even be low hanging fruit and stay on your plan. But that takes patience. So. So, so we're going to do that event on September 10th, six o'clock. Uh, we're going to do it on YouTube. So, you know, everybody can, can see it, share it. You know, we'd love to have you there when we do it. Not sure exactly where I'm, I'm contemplating, you know, the setting, uh, that we're going to do it with, but September 6th, 10th, 6 PM, it's free, uh, self-assessment, self-evaluation. Uh, making sure that you can locate that entrepreneur inside of you. I know there's one in there. I think there's one in just about everybody, but you got to find it and make sure that you have what it takes to execute on it at this present time. I think that's very important. Uh, I want to also remind you that to register your business on our AG Gaston Business Institute website, uh, gastonbusiness.com. You know, I got a got a call, got a request yesterday 
from a local procurement officer looking for a list of minority owned businesses. And uh, unfortunately, African American businesses are often referred to uh, in, a, in, a, in a national and, you know, as minority owned businesses. So, you know, I don't, I don't personally like to embrace that term, but I understand that, you know, I have to use it sometimes uh, because that's part of the jargon uh, in the business world, minority owned business. I like to use black owned businesses or African American owned businesses. And I will make no bones about it. I care more about black and African American owned businesses than I do any other business. And I think that folks that are white care more about white owned businesses than they do any other business. And I think that folks who are Hispanic care more about their businesses. And I have no problem with that. We've got to help our own. In this case, what, but they were looking for minority business list. And I'm happy, Dorothea, good morning, that I was able to send them the list of the hundred plus people who are already on the AG Gaston Business Institute website uh, list, as as well as send the other list. There are several other lists, and we are combining all those lists uh, on our website. But uh, but my point is, I want you to be sure to go on the site, gastonbusiness.com. If you're in business, put your business name, address, information. We've even got an opportunity for you to put your logo. Uh, we, we spend that money on branding and logos, and somebody needs to see them because uh, they don't come free. Somebody designed your logo more than likely, and more than likely, if they designed it, they paid, they charged you for it. And so we want somebody to see it. We want everybody to see it, number one. But number two, we want you to have an opportunity to sell a product, your product, your service to someone who's looking for what you do. Uh, so Mom, good morning. Uh, and so uh, being able to, to have your business in a place that we can drive folks to, that we can drive procurement officers to, that we can drive folks who are interested in supplier diversity to, I think is important. And so uh, so I just encourage you again, you can go on and 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 you can go on the site. And most of us now are able to go in and fill out the information, provide the logo. And uh, and so we're looking looking to see more of you do that. I just mentioned the term supplier diversity, and I want to just uh, elevate that and talk about that for a moment. This is a term that I probably started hearing 20, 25 years ago. Um, we, we used to talk about it in the 70s, it was affirmative action. And affirmative action was helping, you know, make sure that we level the playing field for businesses owned by people of color. Affirmative action had many components, including employment, uh, business development, et cetera. But just on the business thing, it, it, it morphed into supplier diversity where major corporations understand and understood that part of their responsibility to the entire community was to make sure that they spent or spend some of their money as they procure goods and services with people of color, with diverse businesses. Uh, in some cases that meant, that meant women. In some cases that may even mean uh, uh, LGBT, TQ people, but but that we didn't give all the business to the same old group of good old boys who've been getting it all the time, and that we made our supply chains more diverse. So supply diversity is something that um, I think we all ought to understand and ought to focus on and see if there, it's something that we can use to our benefit. In other words, can we use the fact that some major corporations are interested in doing more business with African-American owned businesses or other minority owned businesses? Can we use that to our advantage and how do we do so? So this is something that uh, we've been talking a lot about at the Birmingham Business Resource Center. 
we are in the process of standing up our own supplier diversity department that will coincide with our access to capital department and our capacity building department. We, we know that they all work together. In other words, if you have the capacity, can have the working capital or the liquidity that we can help you get in order to prosecute or pursue some, some contract with a major corporation and you get the contract, then you're good. You're able to pay the loan back. You know, you're making money. You, you have a primary and maybe a secondary source of paying it back. So those three things work together. Supply diversity is important. Uh, it's getting a lot of attention now after, unfortunately, George Floyd and, and the protest and, you know, everybody again, and I've said this before, coming to this kind of late to the party realization that uh, that that our our society has not been fair economically to black people. It hasn't ever been fair. It wasn't fair in 1619 when we, you know, first arrived in Jamestown, Virginia, and it didn't fare in 2020. And it's not going to be fair, you know, in 2050, but we have to make incremental uh, progress and we've made progress, but we can never stop uh, pursuing supply diversity and making sure that we have businesses that are prepared uh, and that are capable, and then that we advocate for those businesses to be utilized by major corporations is very important. So I wrote an article about uh, this, in, and it appeared in a blog, Comeback Town, in, uh, in January of 2019. Benita, good morning. Terry, good morning. And, and basically, it, it just suggests that in Birmingham, and I think this works in Birmingham, I think it would work anywhere. If our major spenders, the organizations that spend the most money, um, and I, there's a laundry list of them, there are probably 20 or 30 of them, that, that, that buy goods and services locally, that spend about $100 billion locally on products, services, et cetera, made a stronger commitment to buying from African-American-owned businesses or other minority-owned businesses, made that commitment publicly and reported publicly on the success or lack thereof, uh, we could study if, there, if we didn't reach our goal, then we can develop programs and, and, and methods to make sure we do. If we did reach our goal, we could increase the goal. And, and if we did that, it would create the rising tide that lifts all boats in our community, not just the boats of black folks. I've been saying that and I'm going to continue to say that. I'm sure you've heard it before. I hope you're not tired of it because I think that it is very important. So, you know, you can go on uh, Comeback Town slash Bob Dickerson and, and read that article. We posted it on Facebook. And so it's, it's out there on my Facebook page. And we've done a conference for the last almost two decades that also focused on economic empowerment through enterprise development. I believe that one of the ways to close the racial wealth gap is to help to create more successful, well-run, financially successful black businesses. I think that, that, is, that that's a no-brainer. It's something that we ought to be doing. And it's something that if we have the political, social uh, will to do so. And if we can instill that in major corporations, in governmental entities, uh, in folks who are involved in economic development, banking and finance and so forth, that we can get that done. So we're having that conversation at the Birmingham Business Resource Center. We are going to continue to have it. You stay tuned, but we want you to play. And, and the way you play is to A, you know, make sure that you're in business, you know, make sure that you touch, have, have checked the boxes and you've done all the things that you need to do to be accepted as a legitimate business, number one, and then make sure that you have a product or service that you can deliver, that you will deliver, on time, right price, you know, we want you to make money. So right price is not just right for who's buying it from you, it's right for you too. 
on time, right price with the right uh, delivery system and the right service. We've got to make sure that our businesses grow. And and that's what we're we're trying to do. I got a chance last night to uh, participate on a on a panel discussion that uh, State Representative Rolanda Hollis uh, put together. Uh, she's actually doing another tonight and one tomorrow. But uh, but we we got a chance to talk for almost an hour and a half and do Q and A. You know about a lot of things uh, associated with business, and uh, a couple of things that I just want to point out uh, that 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 came out of the conversation last night. And, and believe me, there were many. But but if you're in business, Renee, good morning. If you're in business, it's important that you do good record keeping. Good record keeping. Now, most people who are in business have superior knowledge or they should of what they do as a business. If you're a mechanic, you know a lot about cars. If you are a builder, you know a lot about building. If you're, you know, whatever you do, if you're, if, if you own a restaurant, you know a lot about cooking and, you know, restaurant equipment. Hopefully you know a lot about customer service. So we all have the things that, uh, that, that we do, the skills that we bring to our, business profession but we don't all know accounting uh we don't all know bookkeeping in fact most of us don't uh we may not all know uh human resources or personnel management and policies uh most of the time we don't and so it's very important that we surround ourselves as business owners with the people who know what we don't know because those things that you don't know will be the things that trip you up in business. It's the things that you don't know that get you. Um, the things that you know you're good with. And if you are, if you're on a restaurant, but you're also great at accounting and great at HR and great at everything, then fine. Maybe you don't need to surround yourself with so many people. Most folks are not. And so I just want to stress, I can't stress to you enough. The, the fact that one of the things that really hurts a lot of business people is the way they handle money, uh, the way they present their financial pictures. And, um, and, and so a lender looks at you. I may have said this before. Um, and when you go in a bank or you're talking to some investor and you may have on the best of clothes, your tie may be, you know, tied in a perfect knot, a Windsor or whatever, or maybe you wear a bow tie, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, your handshake and your presentation and your, your, your verbiage may be perfect. But if your financial statements look bad, then you're not going to get the loan. You're not going to get the investment. So it's very important that we understand what our financial statements are saying to us, number one. But it's also understand that if that's something or an area where you need help, you get it. You know, don't cheat yourself. Get it. Yes, it costs a little money, but it's worth it. And it's, it is worth it. I, I do believe that there are some things that most of us do in our businesses that we could outsource and spend our time doing what makes us money. So if your accounting or your HR management doesn't really make you money, it keeps you out of trouble, then if you figure the cost of that, let's say it costs you 500 bucks a month, okay, how many hours could are you devoting to it or you have staff devoted to it? Turn those same hours into going out and selling, going out and working, going out and do what you do to make money, not what you do to stay out of trouble and, you know, handle processes, I think you'll find that uh, that it will be well worth the investment. So I just want to encourage you to, to if you're in business, uh, seek professional help when you need it. None of us know everything. None of us know everything. I, I have always used an HR company and an accountant. And I know a little bit about accounting, not that much, not enough to do it myself. And not enough to feel like I would save money, even if I learned more about it. 
I, don't, I think it will cost me money because it will cost me time. I want to make sure that you feel the same way. So again, another shout out to, uh, to representative Hollis. That was a great event. I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, again, you can get that on Facebook live. I'm going to be sharing it on Facebook and I think I'm going to share it on bobdickerson.com as well as here on YouTube. I, I'm going to ask for permission. I think I, she would give me permission to do that, but, but she had a great audience. Uh, uh, Clarissa Kenty was the coordinator and I don't, and she did an excellent job as well. So, so it was a great time. So, you know, we've been doing these Bible basics for business owners. I mentioned that we did a couple of event, events uh, a few years back. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Bible is full of scripture, I think, that relate to, to business owner. I think I have found 300 or so and I talked to a preacher and they told me it was way more than that. So uh, I guess I got to study and, and find the rest of them. And, and and we talked about the uh, Maria. Good morning. We talked about the uh, the the parable of the talents a little bit uh, last week or week before last. Uh, I think that is really informative to business owners. But when I, as I was thinking this morning, um, I thought about Jeremiah twenty nine, where it says, "I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not harm harm you, and plans to give you hope and a, and a future." And you know. I don't think that there's any business owner who shouldn't reflect back on that scripture, on those two verses, Jeremiah 11 through 13, from time to time, you know, perhaps all the time, because, you know, what, what, what God wants for you is for you to succeed. Uh, what he doesn't want for you is for you to be harmed. So as you get out here and you start traveling on your entrepreneur venture and things, sometimes the road gets rough. Uh, you, you run into a couple of detours, things get rocky, your money gets funny. All of those things are bound to happen to us in life. But just understand that if you have reflected, if you have prayed, and, and, and if God has led you on this journey, he'll lead you through it. You know, I firmly believe that. I, I do contend that and know that entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. It's not for the timid. Fear is the enemy of entrepreneurship. So what I want to encourage all of you to do is to make sure that you've dotted your eyes crossed your T's, done everything you can do, and then embark with passion, uh, you know, with energy and with all of your might to make sure that you can be successful as an entrepreneur. I'll check you out again next week. This is Bob Dickerson with In the Black.